based on the cover and the jacket copy that an average person would ask if he was in a bookstore. I never forgot that because it's a fabulous interview technique, incidentally. By the way, did you ever get a copy of Government Zero anywhere? Gone with the wind. Sounds like a setup call. It isn't. I don't know the guy. That would have been a good setup call. If I knew the guy, it would have been a nice call to just talk about the Larry King interview. But I swear on, on your mother's life, that was not a setup interview. I swear. I swear on your mother's life, that was not a, uh, a setup. I don't know who the guy was. Oh, God, I ate spaghetti before the show. I shouldn't have done it. I'm very tense from the book tour. I'm very tense from all the shows I'm doing before the show. So I'm eating too much. I'm just gorging. I'm, it's like a nightmare. I take, people take, take their t anxiety out in different ways. I eat too much. That's all. I overeat. Last night, I, I didn't even want to go out of the house. I cooked a pound of spaghetti. I ate a half, I know, a half a pound of spaghetti with chicken apple sausages. I drank a half a bottle of Bordeaux. You think I felt good from it? Yes, I slept like a baby. That's what I do. It sedates me. It's like a drug. I know exactly what I have to do to calm down. I know what I have to eat, which is huge carbohydrate loads. When my body, I literally collapse. It looks like all the males of my generation, my father's generation, would collapse after a meal, sit on a couch. Think of like Greeks or like Mediterraneans. If you go to their house, think of my big fat Greek wedding, even though I'm not Greek. You look at Mediterranean men of that generation. If you go to the house, let's say for a, a dinner party, dinner, they didn't call it a dinner party. So come over for supper or whatever. After the men ate, didn't they sit on the couch and open their belts and take the top of the pants open? Because the stomach, and they'd sit moaning. And then the mothers knew that they served them properly. As so opposite to California cuisine, where there's nothing on the plate, no one knows what they even ate. They go in, they get a bill for $300, and they ate nothing after going to McDonald's on the way home. Okay, back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I just got an email from someone who says, I just watched your interview on Alex Jones. You should run for president now and quit radio. I got to tell you the song. I started today's show. I was dead, dead tired, exhausted. The minute that sound goes off and the minute I start the show, I have so much energy. I could stay on the, I think I should be on the air 24 hours. Like a, a, a cam follows me. Like take a microphone to bed and like wake up and, say, and do my dreams online and then get up and say, I just take breaks for the bathroom. I, it's so addictive. There is nothing more addictive, by the way, than the media. I got to tell you, it, once it gets in your blood, there is no escaping it. You can't leave it. There's no leaving the media. It's uh, hard to... It's like another consciousness that's attached to your brain. And when you're not expressing it, you fall apart. You become exhausted. I, I've put it many different ways in, in different... By the way, in the next hour, I'm going to play a little bit of the Alec Jones interview. Because people are buzzing about it. And we're going to talk about beards. Why men are growing beards. And some of the guys... One guy calls says men with beards are being referred to as lumber sexuals. That's very interesting. Another guy says, beards show men trying to reclaim masculinity. And the military started the trend. That's interesting. That's right, because let's say women can't grow beards. It's a definite differential. I'm a man, period. You could be gay and have a beard, but you're a man. You're definitely mad. You're asserting your XY. That's all. It's that simple. Here's XY. You're an XX. I'm an XY. Have a nice day. That's what it is. That's what I think. Nothing more than that. Okay, back in a minute. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show. The Savage Nation. Home of unprotected talk. Borders. Language. Culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The Savage Nation. Hour number two. So I'm, I'm having a good time today. It's kind of a, a hiatus in the week. The book has been out a week. It's doing great. They're buying it not like hotcakes, but it's buying it like a best-selling book. Government Zero. We'll know within the hour where it lands on the New York Times bestseller list, and I'll let you know the minute I know. But I was having some fun in the last hour, and I said, beards, beards are popular. Why are beards popular? It's a social phenomenon. I want to talk about it. And some callers had some great ideas. And then I went and posted a picture of myself 
taken in 1981 by a very famous photographer that he recently gave me. I forgot about this picture. I remember the sweater to this day. That was my Berkeley sweater because I remember something in the seventy. I was at UC Berkeley working for my PhD. I had that. It was like my Berkeley professor sweater that I used to wear going over the Richmond Bridge. And what a head of hair, my God. Anyway, I had a full beard. I, I don't know if I like the... I, I don't know looking at it, like a hipster beard. So I'm looking at my Facebook comments that people are making. Some of them are very funny. I'm not going to read them all, but some of them are hilarious. Some of them look like just stuff that people would write in your high school yearbook. And some of them are nasty, you know, idiots. They just can't take anybody who's happy or famous. Guy writes, is that you when you were a red diaper doper baby? <laughs> Which is funny. A woman, Harry says, grow out that beard again. Tisha says, the beard. Another guy says, the year I graduated high school. Another one says, you still look the same. Thanks, Jeff. And he says, I enjoyed you on Alex Jones yesterday. Uh, I don't know, some of them. Mike, where did them funny voices go? You would have me dying when you do the New Yorker. I don't know what that means. The man behind the voice, love your show, handsome and smart. I love your eyes. That's very touching. Someone saw my eyes. Another one says, you mean it's not Robert De Niro? Another one says, Uncle Mike, awesome and handsome. Here's an Michael, I'd like to have a copy of the radio program of the blind young man who learned how to play instruments and his father taught him to listen to noises in the neighborhood. That was unbelievable. You know, it's funny that this man should write that Hector Roca. Uh, that show was 50, um, I'm syndicated by Cumulus three years. That's 10 years ago. A guy called from New York who was blind, a musician, and he had this audience spellbound. And he said that he was blind, he was born blind to something, and his father used to sit him down in the stoop or in a chair in the street, and he learned to listen to all the sounds in the neighborhood. That's how he communicated. His ears became that sharp. I never forgot that. I thought about it the other night. A, look at this comment. The after effects and of love by the sewer plant. Come on, that's mean. Love. <laughs> Hillary would have loved you back then. Still a hipster botanist. Nah, not anymore. I wish I were, was. The beard reminds me of Shel Silverstein. Here's one from Macedonia, the last one. From Konstantin Isakovsky. I am speechless, Dr. Savage. Greetings from Macedonia. Okay, what can I say? Should I not have posted a picture of myself then? Beards are popular now. So I'm going to say, I had a beard before they were popular. That's all. I, mean, I love the guys that have beards. I mean, we had beards too. So I figured, okay, that's what I look like. And and then what? Is there anything more to it than that? I don't know. Now I want to do something. There is a problem with beards because you're you're associated at at the TSA with ISIS. That's the problem. If you have a beard, they'll do a double a double triple uh, check on you. You know that. The terrorists were smart. They sh they shaved their beards off, and they would look like Democrats. So there is a problem with that. The beard. I'm not so sure. I may have to shave it off again, but I don't fly anywhere anyway. I'd rather drive than fly. Who wants to go through that? I, I do once in a while. I'm on the advanced list on, on Southwest where you pay a few bucks and then you march through the line. Isn't it like a real big deal? 50 bucks. I don't know. They march you through a separate line. You think you're the president. You don't have to take your shoes off, your shirt off, your belt off, your neck off, your crucifix, your Jewish star, your wig. Nothing has to come off. Then they put you through the machine and it rings and you don't know why. Then they say, please take off your shoes, your belt, your hair, your wig, your glasses and your wallet. Because it went off anyway. So what's the point? I don't know. But it's quicker in some regard. I don't like to take my shoes off at dirty airports. It's one th You know, sliding your socks along. You know how unhygienic that is? All right. Where'd you get the picture? Well, why are men growing beards? Uh, there's a number of reasons. I, I think it's to assert the fact that you're a man in, a, in an overly feminized world and a metrosexual world. I think that's what it comes down to. Guys are just saying, I'm a guy. Go ahead, you grow one if you can. Make my day. It, have we finished the beard topic or not? Or, or yes. Anyone have a good beard? Here's what I want to do. Instead of wasting your time talking about beards. I know you're getting itchy already. I hear the finger, the trigger finger ready to hit the button. I have a sixth sense in radio. It's shocking. I could tell when you're bored and ready to hit the button. I know you're ready to, to jump because I did beard too long and you're ready for, all you want to hear is the Republican victory in Kentucky. Why them Democrats really got their butt slammed? Yes, indeed, this shows that there's going to be a Republican sweep across the universe. Uh, don't get so excited. Midterm elections, the minorities don't come out. The, the, the students don't come out. Okay. Uh, you know, you know what happens. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't count your, uh, 
Don't count your R's before they hatch. But have good, have a good time, if you wish. So here's what I want to do before you hit the button and run. I want to start with the Alex Jones interview because it was so good. I'm not going to play all of it. Robert, would you please begin it? Let's see if I like it. Let's hear it. Okay, without hammering the book, I want to start with the title because it says it all. Government Zero. If we don't see President Zero invoking Government Zero, I'd like to know what it's going to take for the average moron out there. Idiot, moron, fools who have sold the country away, running around in shorts with Halloween costumes with their children on drugs and sugar. And they wonder why these SOBs with that monster tyrant leftist in the White House. This guy is the smartest leftist in the history of the world. This BS artist, Barry from Honolulu, has done more harm to the world than Marx and Lenin put together. And he gets away with it for one reason. He doesn't shout like me. Have you ever heard Barry from Honolulu scream? Never. He is the smoothest con man in the history of the world. He makes Soros look like a chump. Soros, by the way, is behind breaking all the borders of Europe. You know that. With his open society. You know, Soros is who flooded America with marijuana. You know that. Now, many people like marijuana. I think it's one of the most toxic substances in the world. It is the road to addiction. It is a gateway drug. Who has made it suddenly so friendly? Ten years ago, I fought with one of Soros's minions on my radio show. Soros was the first to fund medical marijuana initiatives in Arizona and California. And I was arguing, are you people crazy? It's a gateway drug. You're going to hook a generation on drugs. We had this argument. It's history now. Marijuana is as friendly as candy corn. Everyone thinks it's a benign herb. It is not. So what does it have to do with Soros's master plan? The man is possibly the most evil genius on the planet, in my estimation. Why does he want to break the borders of every nation on Earth? What is it that they're after? What do you mean no borders? Well, listen, no borders, no language, no culture. A mass of stupid drug humanity, easily manipulated, turned into slaves, serfs in their own country. What more do you need to know? Children on drugs, parents on alcohol, marijuana and drugs. And then you have the puppet masters, as in the Godfather, the Peza Novantes, pulling the strings, sucking the money out of the people's pockets as they go to work like slaves in their little slave factories, thinking they're free. Remember Orwell's book? Remember that great phrase, those who rattle their chains most loudly scream, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, as he saw what communism had wrought in Europe, socialism. He was originally a socialist, and then he saw who they really were. He saw they were monsters and dictators. Stalin, Hitler, all socialists, everyone forgets that. Very convenient to forget Hitler was a socialist. Stalin, Hitler, socialists, different sides of the coin. Now we have... Socialism is suddenly popular in America. How is that possible? Because the drugged morons don't even know what it is. They don't know what it has wrought. They don't know where it leads. They have no idea what it will do to them. Now, couple that with bringing in as many Islamic fascists as you possibly can, as quickly as you can. Why? Why are they bringing in so many young men of military age into Europe, into America? What's their game plan here? Confiscation of guns. It ain't happening. It would not Australia. Australia had no Second Amendment. That's number one. I have a tape that I keep playing in my radio show from Elena Kagan when she was appointed to the Supreme Court, when she went through the fake hearing, the kangaroo fake hearing of whether she should be appointed or not. She was asked about the Second Amendment. Remember her? She's this kind of pickle saleswoman. In my day, the most she would have done is sold bloomers at Macy's. Now she's on the Supreme Court. This is right out of the Communist China playbook. Take people from the bottom and put them on the top. Take people on the top and throw them to the bottom. So Elena Kagan, when she was grilled, fake grilled, she says, where do you stand on guns? And she says, the Second Amendment is established law. The Second Amendment is established law. Well, if it's established law, how could Barry from Honolulu take your guns? There was a time not too long ago when the Democrats would never even touch God, guns, and gays. Remember that that time not so long ago? But Barry from Honolulu is such a slick con artist that he's so hoodwinked the American drug addict that they actually think it's time for socialism, gun seizure, no borders, and flood America with your Muslim brethren. The people are stupid and they're drugged and they sense they could get away with it. But you know what? They're reading the tea leaves wrong. 
There'll be a revolution and they're going to lose. There are too many guns and too many people ready to fight them. I'm not calling for revolution. They are. Let's be very clear.